Welcome back to another day in Destiny. Last episode, we knocked out both Venus and Mars, destroying the heart of the Black Garden. The vanilla campaign was complete, and after watching the final cutscene, our Guardian had reached level 20 with a 108 light level. Today, in day 4, our mission is to complete both the Dark Below and the House of Wolves quest lines. It's quite a lot to get done in just one episode, but I hope you go on to enjoy it. And if you do, be sure to leave a like and a comment letting me know you want to see more of this series. Starting first with the Dark Below questline, we return to Earth to stop Sardon Fistocrota from bringing more destruction to the Cosmodrome. Sardon commands the Hive spawn on Earth. Search the grotto, find this monster, and see to his end. Now I'm a level 20 and this is a level 10 mission, but Sardon actually hit really hard and was quite threatening. Oh, whoa. Holy Sardon, chill. Dude, what is happening? <laughs> After beating Sardon, we return to Eris in the tower. And do you guys remember when Eris used to be over here with her big ugly ship blocked in the nice view? Thank goodness we blew that thing up in the Taken King campaign because that was an eyesore. Now Eris resides in a dark little corner under the stairs like Harry Potter. Here she tells us we need to go back to Earth and save Rasputin from the Hive's assault on one of his bunkers. You know, back when in the story and the lore Rasputin was on Earth, before this mess of an expansion came along and retconned everything. This area of the mission used to actually be accessible by glitching inside during the beta of Destiny 1, further proving the theories that Destiny 1's first two DLCs were made up of content cut from the base game. In the bunker, we encounter Omnigol for the very first time. Something's wrong. There's just something about this mission that is kind of creepy and eerie between the music and the violent screaming from Omnigol. It wasn't an amazing mission, but it will always be a memorable one. Omnigal retreats after we slay the might of Crota, and again we return to the tower. But this time before I talk to Eris, I take a moment to just enjoy the peacefulness and the beauty of the original tower. It feels so good to still see so many people running around the tower and enjoying Destiny 1. Heard. Rectandu. Skold. Old names for Earth, Mars, and Venus in the pre-collapse holy text. Eventually, I do talk to Eris, who sends us to the moon to destroy Crota's soul before the Hive can wake him.
A relatively easy mission again, but another memorable one. Crota's soul is banished. You have given me the gift of vengeance. I thank you. And even if they don't yet know it, the city thanks you. All that's left for the Dark Below questline is to destroy Omnigol, Crota's side chick who will do anything and everything to ensure he is resurrected on Earth. Unfortunately for her, she fell in love with the wrong demigod and messed with the wrong guardians. When we return to the tower, Eris Morn gives us a unique fusion rifle called Murmur. And Murmur is really cool because you could change the elemental damage on it, and that would also change its archetype. It's too bad this gun didn't really amount to much or get a lot of attention because the idea behind its design was really cool. Now of course, we still have Crota to kill inside the raid, and we'll get to it in this series, I promise. But for now, we're playing through the campaigns and a few quest lines before we get to the raids and other endgame stuff. Your ghost is feeding me telemetry. I see what he sees. Why not take one of those heavy pikes for a spin? Now we begin our journey through the House of Wolves questline, which is one of my heavy favorites. Pikes. House of Wolves did have a couple missions that were basically vanilla missions in reverse, but there were a lot of new things added like enemy types, enemy mechanics, and locations. We even got the addition of the Scorch Cannons, which were awesome. The missions also stepped up the quality of the dialogue, the storyline, leaving Petra as one of the most likable characters. Last week I was delivering court messages. Today we're delivering explosions. I love field work. Get after them, Guardian. Varix also brought a lot of great dialogue and story to the missions. <laughs> Skolas' plan had been to rally all the fallen houses behind him, the House of Winter, the House of Devils, and the House of Kings. He was able to gain support of the House of Winter on Venus, but was unable to gain support of the House of Devils and the House of Kings on Earth. Because of this, he sent the Silent Fang loose on Earth to kill the opposing devils, but we came in and wiped them out just outside the Cosmodrome wall. Skolas then sent one of his own barons to negotiate terms with two of the House of Kings barons. The House of Kings barons had planned to kill Skolas' baron, but we burst through the door at the last minute and just kill all three of them like a madman. There was a great mission that sent us back inside the Vault of Glass because Skolas was looking to get his hands on the Vex technology. 
We had to destroy oracles and slay the remaining wolves inside so Skolas wouldn't be able to use the oracles to tap into the Vex network. It's actually a really interesting piece of the story and not just some poor excuse to get back into the Vault of Glass. It had some real genuine story implications if the Fallen obtained any significant Vex technology. Unfortunately, Skolas was able to get a hold of just enough Vex tech to pull the entire House of Wolves through time in a final stand atop the Citadel on Venus. It's here that Queen Marasov wants to capture Skolas rather than kill him so she can interrogate him. I stole the gift of freedom, secrets of time and space. House of Wolves will stand forever. The House of Wolves is broken. Stand by for a transmission. He has nowhere left to run. Take him down! This is Morosov, Queen of the Awoken. Guardian. When you first came in search of the Black Garden, I thought of you as just another mote of light, too far from its traveler. I see now that I was wrong. Accept my thanks, and the promise of a fitting reward. Petra, bring Skolas to me. Now after Marasov learns all she can from Skolas, she invites us to kill him inside the Prison of Elders. This is another thing on my list of to-dos, and we'll most definitely tackle this boss fight in the future. But there is another threat who we need to deal with before the House of Wolves quest is complete. Tanix has no house. He kneels before no banner, owes allegiance to no Kel. He is a murderer. Unlike the Omnigal Strike where I was paired with a couple of other Guardians to take her down, here I was left to fight Tanix alone. It took some effort and a bit of time thanks to my very limited bare bones loadout, but in the end, Tanix died, still without a house, and I lived to tell the tale. We made a lot of progress in today's episode, completing both the Dark Below and the House of Wolves quest lines. This was definitely my personal favorite episode. Both Dark Below and House of Wolves weren't perfect, but I really did enjoy playing through their quest lines again. And we still have to kill Crota, Skolas, and the other Prison of Elders bosses. Destiny 1 just feels so refreshing to play again, and I've loved making this series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode as much as I did playing it. If you did enjoy, then be sure to leave a like on the video and a comment letting me know what you thought. 
If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more Destiny content on the channel. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you in my next video.